Okay. Okay, so um, just a few little tricks. Uh, I'm going to close my outliner. If I want to work full screen, uh, one thing to get me closer is to turn my channel box off, but somehow this uh, modeling thing isn't working right. Uh, it keeps popping my channel box in a place I don't like. So I want to work full screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my curve tool first right here. And I like to use the Bezier curve. That's me. Okay, that's just the way I am. I'm going to have my uh, grid snap on. Select my Bezier tool. I'm going to hit Control and Spacebar. And then what that does is it just makes it full screen. Now it's kind of like an expert mode. Um, but I can just hit Control Spacebar to get back out of that. So it just helps me get more screen real space, real estate, especially when I'm doing something um, for a recording. So what I want to show is the way that I do this is I start off, um, remember my grid snap is on, I've got my Bezier tool, and I'm just going to snap to the middle uh, of the world right here. And I just click once. And then I'm going to go ahead and click out a little bit further. And I'm, if you'll notice, I'm purposely clicking on the grid points. This time when I click, though, I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to drag out my handle. Okay, so now that's going to give me a curve when I put my next point down. And my next point I'm just going to put down here. And I'm going to drag that out. And then I'm going to put one up here. And I'll drag that out. And so what happens is when I drag it out, it automatically snaps to the closest grid. And I can keep doing that. I can drag it out further, uh, but it's going to get wonky if I do. So we're going to avoid wonkiness. And I'm going to go ahead and just, let's see, I'll, I'll go ahead and pull one more out right here. Maybe click that out twice or something. This should be fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my turn and kind of come up like this. I'll put another one here come up a couple clicks and then I'm going to come up and click once and then go one over click once and then go one over and click once now you'll notice that when I say click once I mean it's, I'm snapping it one grid over I shouldn't say click once but I'm snapping it one over I'm gonna if you'll notice I'm gonna go ahead and try to match up my profile on the other side so I'm gonna go snap and I think this one I, I pulled out twice and then this one I'm going to click down and then this one I'm going to kind of go like this snap it out once uh, I'll probably put one just like one right here like that and then snap back to the middle okay now I'm not done alright so I don't have to be finished with this yet I can just go ahead and right click over and go to control verts and now I can slide these around. But before I do that, I'm going to turn my snaps off at this point. So I'm just control space to get back to my, my full view. And I'm turning my snaps off because at this point, I want to be able to adjust this stuff by hand. So I'm just going to kind of I'm going to move this. I actually want these to be out a little bit further. I, I, I kind of put those too close. So I'm going to go like something like that. And let's see, this one... I'm just going to move this handle in a little bit, like so. And again, this is entertainment modeling. We don't have to be, it just has to look good. You know, it doesn't, this is not a car part. It doesn't have to, you know, save anybody's life or anything like that. So don't worry about it being completely perfect. I'm going to snap there, pull this out a little bit. I actually want to grab these two. You can actually scale these two. You can scale them in towards each other, like, like that. So I just scaled two of those in towards each other. And... If I was being really persnickety, I'd probably make this cup a little bit thinner, but I, I think I could deal with this. Let me do this too. I'm going to go back to my move tool, and I'm going to give this thing like a little bit of a nice curvature to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just select some of these handles, curve those, uh, move these handles out. Let's actually grab all of these. Move these a little bit like that, then grab these handles, move it a little bit. Grab just this guy here, move that a little bit, and now I'm getting somewhere. I like where it's going now, a little bit better. I just want it to look a little bit more organic. And that's just me. If you want to make a nice straight coffee mug that's boring, that's fine. <laughs> All right, so just kidding. Straight coffee mugs are fine. All right.
So there we go. That's good. Let's go to perspective mode so we can see this is what we got, right? Okay. Um, while I'm at this, let's go back to my front view. And I might as well drop a curve down for my handle. Because I'm going to teach you guys how to extrude a polygon along a curve. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to... I need my curve again, so i got to hit this guy right here. And I don't need my snaps on for the handle. I'm just going to kind of go... Actually, it's snapping automatically to the actual edge of the curve, which is fine. I can, I can deal with that. So I'm going to snap there. Oh, that's weird. That has never happened before. Let me see something. Oh, I was like, it was somehow adding to that. That's not what I wanted. I don't know why I was doing that. Let me go here. Oh, that's weird. All right, I guess if I snap it right to the curve, it, does, it, it tries to add it to the curve. So let me just, let me not snap it right to the curve. I'm going to just go a little bit outside of it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and, and kind of make a handle, whatever the shape I think it should be. And of course, you know, you could always change this later. So it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Control vertex. I can grab this. Maybe move it up. Maybe move this like this. Move this over. Okay. Something like that. Okay. All right. So my first... My first... Um, vert or I should say I guess you call it a vert my first point my first point in this curve is the top one so this is where I'm going to want to extrude from because the Maya by default one if you do an extrude along a curve it's going to do it from the from point number one basically so I'm going to go ahead and just make note of that and I'm going to go back to object mode let's go to our perspective and I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a polygon primitive cylinder. So I made a cylinder. Let's focus on it or frame it. And I'm going to go into my attribute editor, or I should say into my um, my channel box, and I'm going to change this to 8. So it should look something like this, like a stop sign. And let's turn off my grid for right now. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to delete. I'm going to delete everything except for this top face right here. So I'm going to go right click, go to faces. So all I do is click, right click down and then drag to where it says face. I'm going to select everything on the bottom. And you can tell that the top is not selected. And then I'll just hit delete because all I want is this top. All right. So now I'm going to go to object mode and I want to center pivot. So then that way it's right in the middle just makes moving it easier. I'm going to go back to my front view and you can see it kind of looks like a line right now but that's just because we're looking at orthographic and I'm going to line it up to the edge of the curve where it starts and then I'm just going to rotate it so that the normals basically match the normals of the curve. So it almost looks like remember how we discussed normals in class in lecture today? Well now these normals are kind of pointing down the path of the curve. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and go into perspective view. It would be a little easier to tell what's going on now. So um, I'm going to select this, go to face, double click on it. It'll select the whole thing. And I'm going to scale this just a little bit like that because I want my coffee, my coffee handle to be more like a real one. And they're scaled a little bit like that. And then while this is still selected, I'm actually going to hold shift and select my curve. Okay, so you should it should look like this. You should have your your face should be facing the curve, not the back side of the face, the front side of the face, and then you should shift select this curve. And you have to have the faces selected, not the object. So in other words, if you have something like this where you have just the object selected, that's wrong. You got to go into the faces, select the faces, okay, like so, shift select the curve. Then we go into mesh edit and I'm just going to hit extrude. And you should see something look kind of weird. It's going to what it's going to do is it's going to kind of try to stretch this out to the other end of the curve. All we have to do to fix this is put in divisions. Like so. All right. 
So now that we've got some divisions in there, I can hit Q to drop that tool, and I've got myself a nice little handle. Now I am going to delete, while I'm here, I'm going to delete some of these. I don't need, I actually want them to be open. So if I, by the way, if you hold Control and Shift together, you can keep selecting. So if I hold Control and Shift, I can keep selecting. If I hold Shift, I can keep selecting, but if I select over it again, it actually inverts the selection. So you have to hold Control and Shift and it'll keep selecting. Okay, so let me just delete those. I don't want those anymore. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to delete these. Delete. And then just make sure you didn't delete anything you don't want. I mean, you do want, I should say. All right, so we're rocking. All right, so let's go ahead and make a revolve now with our other piece. So select this piece. All right, we know revolve. We go to surfaces. We can bring out the revolve tool. I'm actually going to turn it right into a polygon. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to polygons. And this time, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to use this per span number of isoparms and see how this turns out. And I'm going to hit apply. And actually, that looks pretty good, other than I don't like how my profile curve looks just yet. Like, it looks a little weird to me. So I'm going to do some adjustments, but I'm going to do it from a front view. Um, so what I want to do is I want to grab this, I'm going to right click and drag, go to control vertex. Now the history should still be on here, so it should move along, my polygon should move along with my, my isoparms. Let's go to wireframe so I can see this better. And I think what I want to do is I want to move these out a little bit like this. And so you can see the polygons moving right along with it. Okay. and. Um, let me see, let me look at my, my uh, perspective view again. Actually, I think that's fine then. That's, it was just the bottom that was bothering me. The rest of it looks okay. You hit five on your keyboard to see it. All right, and if you wanna see your wireframe, you can turn this on, wireframe unshaded. Okay, that should be good. All right. Now, this is all I want you guys to be able to finish for today. Okay, I will go around and help anybody who's got any issues. And what we're going to do later is we're actually going to take this handle and we're going to merge it with this object in a way that we can, we can basically smooth it and it'll look like a real coffee mug. So we'll get to that in the next session, but I want you guys to get um, this done today. And I'm going to save the file. Save often. One sixteen, week four, coffee mug. There we go. All right.